Hello everyone, this is Nitish and we have started an initiative called Plump series, which is prelims level up MCQ series. Here we discuss 5 MCQs daily and this will help you in your UPSC preparation. Today is episode number 53 and I am dealing with economics MCQs. Before starting this class, I would like you to please subscribe the channel and also like and comment on videos. These contents are free of cost, so for test series and foundation video, you can contact to Vice Sir on WhatsApp 7200-681-675. So let's begin. Today's MCQ number one is which of the following statement is or are correct in respect of NEPAM? NEPAM means National Intellectual Property Awareness Mission. This question is basically related to contemporary affairs. So let's look at the statements. Statement number one is its mandate is to impart intellectual property awareness training to students. Its nodal ministry is Ministry of Education. Options are one only, two only, both one and two, none of the option, none of the option. So I will give you 10 seconds. Try to answer this question and please write it in the comment section. So its answer will be option number A, which means that only statement one is the correct and statement two is the incorrect option. Now let's look at the explanation. NEPAM, it is launched in 2021. Its mandate is basically to impart IP awareness, which means that intellectual property awareness and basic training to students. Its nodal ministry is Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So as you can say that, uh, as you can see that, in its mandate, it is written that we have to create IP awareness and basic training to students, which means that it will be a confusing statement that its nodal ministry can be Ministry of Education. But it is wrong because its nodal ministry is Ministry of Commerce and Industry. It is implemented by Intellectual Property Office, the Office of Controller General of Patents, Design and Trademarks. So these are the informations related to NEPAM. Now let's look at MCQ number two. The central government has recently amended Atal Pension Yojana investment rules. So the Atal Pension Yojana is under option number A is Ministry of Finance, option number B is Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, option number C is Ministry of Commerce and Industry and option number D is Ministry of Agriculture. I will give you 10 seconds, try to answer this question and write it in the comment section. So its answer will be option number A, that is Ministry of Finance. Now let's look at the explanation. Here we will discuss what is Atal Pension Yojana. So in Atal Pension Yojana, the eligibility is primarily focused on unorganized workers, but any Indian citizen in the age group of 18 to 14 years can join, which means that the Indian citizen lying in the range of 18 to 40 years can be included in this Yojana and they are from uh, they are from unorganized sector and they should have their saving bank account or post office saving bank account benefits related to this yojana are guaranteed pension of 1000 to 5000 rupees depending upon the contribution receivable from the age of 60 years here the government contribution is 50% of the total prescribed contribution up to rupees 1000 per annum but the conditions are available only for a period of 5 years and the second con condition is Subscriber should not be an income taxpayer or covered under any existing scheme. It comes under Ministry of Finance. That why the answer is A, that the Atal Pension Yojana is under Ministry of Finance. Now move on to MCQ number 3. Under which of the following circumstances may capital gains arise? Statement number 1. When there is an increase in the sales of a product, when there is a natural increase in the value of property owned, 
when you purchase a painting and there is a growth in its value due to increase in its popularity the options are one only two and three only two only one two and three that is all of the above i will give you 10 seconds try to answer this question and write it in the comment section So the answer will be option number B that is 2 and 3 which means that the statement 2 and 3 are correct and statement 1 is incorrect. Now let's look at the explanation. Sorry. Statement number 1 is incorrect because increased sale of a product does not imply the increase the value of that product. So no capital gain. That's why the statement number 1 is incorrect. Statement number 2 and 3 are correct as the capital gain is an increase in the capital asset value and is considered to be realized when asset is sold. Realized capital gain and losses occurs when asset is sold which triggers a taxable event. Unrealized gains and losses sometimes referred to as paper gain and losses reflects an increase or decrease in an investment value but are not considered a capital gain that should be treated as a taxable event which is mentioned in your statement number 2 and 3 that is when there is a natural increase in the value of property owned and when you purchase a painting and there is a growth in its value due to increase in its popularity. That's why the statement number 2 and 3 are correct and statement number 1 is incorrect. Now move on to MCQ number 4. It has been observed that the transmission of RBI's monetary policy changes to bank's interest rate is a weak in India. What may be the possible reason behind this? Statement number one, banks borrow a large proportion of fund through repo mechanism. Cost of funds for the bank is high. More than 50% fund or total deposit under banks are term deposits. Corporate bond market in India is well developed. Options are 2 and 3 only, 1 and 4 only, 1, 2 and 3 only, 3 and 4 only. I will give you 10 seconds. Try to answer this question. So the answer will be option number A that is 2 and 3 only which means that statement number 2 and statement number 3 are the possible reason behind the transmission of RBI's monetary policy changes to bank interest rate is weak in India. Now let's look at the explanation. Statement number 1 is incorrect as customer deposit may make up almost 80% of all banks fund from which they then lend to borrowers. On the other hand banks borrow a municipal fraction from RBI's under repo. That's why the statement number one is incorrect because it is mentioned here that banks borrow a large proportion of fund through repo mechanism. But in the explanation, we saw that banks borrow a municipal proportion of fund from the repo mechanism. That's why the statement number one is incorrect. Now, statement number two is correct because to attract deposit, banks pay a high deposit rate to depositor. Hence, the cost of fund is high. That's why the statement number two is correct. Statement number three is also correct as 65% of the total deposit are term deposit which means that they are fixed for a certain duration and take on an average up to 2 years to get repriced at fresh rate. That's why the statement number 3 is also correct because more than 50% of the funds under banks are term deposit as I already explained to you. Now statement number 4 is incorrect as financial system is not more diverse and the corporate bond market is not well developed. Big borrowers and corporate take high risk loan from banks. Rising NPA and weak balance sheet makes bank risk averse, uh, risk averse to lend or to reduce lending rates. That's why the statement number four is incorrect because the corporate bond market in India is not well developed. But here it is mentioned it is well developed. Now move on to MCQ number five. An increase in bank rate generally 
generally indicates that the option number a market rate of interest is likely to fall option number b central bank is no longer making loans to commercial bank option number c central bank is following an easy money policy option number d central bank is following a tight money policy So, so I will, will give you 10 seconds, seconds try, try to answer this question and write it in the comment section. But, but before answering the question, question I, would I would like to draw attention that those students, students who don't know what, what is bank rate, what, what is easy money policy, policy what is tight money, money policy, they can refer to the economics playlist, playlist which is which already, already uploaded on the YCIS 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 YouTube channel, channel so, so that, that your basic, basic concepts can be clear. clear. And please try to answer this question and write it in the comment section. So, so the answer, answer will be option, option number D. D. That, that is, is an increasing bank, bank rate generally indicates that the central, central bank is following a tight monetary money, money policy. policy. Now, now let's, let's look at the explanation. explanation. Bank, bank rate or discount, discount rate is the rate of interest which a central, central bank charges on the loan advances to commercial, commercial bank. But, but here, as you know that bank rate and repo rate, rate is little similar, but, but in bank rate there, there is no collateral. Which means that the bank has to the bank has Uh, use, use no collateral, collateral for taking the, the loan. loan. An increase in bank rate means that, that the central bank is following a tight money, money policy. policy. Under, Under this situation, bank, bank will have to pay a high rate of interest, which will, will make borrowing costlier. Thus, the, the bank, bank need to raise to their lending rates to accommodate, to accommodate the increase in bank rate. So, so here, here we end with this video. video. I, I hope you like this video. video. So, so the, the next episode will be tomorrow. So please subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you.